Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kaylee Ellen and welcome to this week's video. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your one-stop shop to create and run your own website, but more on that later in the video. So hello, we are back with another Rare Plant Index and as you can probably see from the title and the thumbnail, this week's Rare Plant Index is on Colocasia. If you don't know what Colocasia are, they are honestly very similar to Alocasia. So if you like those, you may like these. There are some differences, there are some pros and cons. I will do my best to tell you all about it throughout the video. But if that sounds like something that interests you, keep watching. If you have no idea what a Rare Plant Index is, it is a series here on YouTube where I take a plant and I categorize it from uncommon, rare, very rare, extremely rare, and if applicable, but not always, a holy category. Please remember that I like to categorize these via commercial rarity and not via numbers in the wild, because those two things are honestly very, very different. So now I wanted to do Colocasia this week because it's actually quite an up and coming thing, right? I know Colocasia have been around for a long time. Okay. I'm not saying they're not, but at the moment there is literally a new hybrid coming out every week and the market specifically in Asia is taking over very, very quickly. Kind of like what Alocasia did last year. So what, 2021? Alocasia kind of came into fashion a bit more. This year it is without a doubt Colocasia and honestly some of the plants on this list cost thousands and I mean thousands. So it's quite a big deal and I think it's probably a good time to talk about it. I have some quick notes just to do a little introduction with because Colocasia aren't something that I'm super familiar with gonna be honest. So they love warm, wet conditions and they are generally grown outside. Some of these plants can grow so quickly you'd be surprised, like way quicker than a normal house plant and I mean that. Some are very, very easy to grow, very, very tenacious. Some just hate life. I know that's the case with a lot of plants but I think you'll find in the field of Colocasia that when these things grow they grow. If you own them and you have a quick grower, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. These are faster than your average elephant ear. They have been around forever, of course, and to be honest, there hasn't been much interest until, of course, very recently where we now have a shit ton of hybrids coming out. So that's really, really interesting. And I think, to be honest, I think every plant's going to do this. Every plant's going to have its day. The more affordable varieties, nearly all of them have gone through TC. So if you find a common or an uncommon one, you can probably get these quite easily. You will be getting them for a plug you won't be getting a huge plant but honestly one they grow really quick and two they are probably everywhere so that's really good news if you want to try one out they generally ship okay but they can lose leaves and grow back to the comb and rot all their roots very similar to an alocasia so honestly you are getting the same deal in terms of shipping so if you buy a plant from overseas maybe don't expect it to look that great if you get it from a garden center and it's as is and you don't have to repot it or anything like that then you're going to be fine shall we just start should we just get right into it? Okay, so how many do I have for common? I usually do about three. We have more. I think I've got about five in common for you. So let's just get straight into this. So we're going to talk about some common Colocasia just so you can get a feel of what Colocasia are, what's generally out there, what's the first thing that you're probably going to see in garden centers or in shops or whatever have you. So the first Colocasia I want to talk about is the Colocasia teacup and this is really adorable. Now it might not look like much. I mean I think it does personally. I think it's really cool. But what it does is those leaves, because it's literally called a teacup because those leaves fill up with water and over time as they get full, they will tip outward from the base of the plant and they will pour the water out. So that is why it's called Colocation Teacup. And honestly, I think it's lovely. I think it's really nice. Is it like super, super um, visual looking? Maybe not, but I would kind of like to see this process, maybe like over a time lapse or something. That'd be really cool. It's cute. It's really cute. And these will have been through TC, 100%. So if you want it, should be pretty easy to find. Right, next up, we have the Colocasia Imperial Giganti. Giganti. Now, this is quite simplistic looking, but it's got a little bit of contrast to it. The plant I'm going to show you after this has more contrast. So if you like a bit of this, you might want the next one instead. But of course, I'm just plucking some of these out for you to look at. Really, really nice plant that. I don't have any notes on that because honestly, it's very difficult to make notes on plants that you don't know about. Because as you know, if I haven't owned these plants, my opinion is essentially, what does it look like? Do I like it? But it does look nice. I know, obviously, I've got this entire list on my phone. So I know that I wouldn't pick this because there's, there's, there's a lot coming. There is a lot coming. It's nice. Don't really care too much. But if you like that and you want a little bit of an upgrade, we have the Colocasia Antiquorum Illustris, 
which looks very similar. It's just a lot darker and a lot more contrasty. Now I'm pretty sure, I can't confirm, but I think the colouring generally on colocasia, if you have a green colocasia, it's supposed to come through very dark. That's a light thing. So I think the more light they have, the darker they will go. So you can probably see the picture I'm showing you. There is a lot of leaves that are contrasted and then there are some that are faded. I don't know if that's an old leaf thing or a light thing or a maturity thing. It could be so many things. If you do know generally how it works, of course, leave a comment down below. But I know in a lot of cases it's a light thing. Anyway, moving on, we have, we have a little bit more of an upgrade on that. And this here is the Alocasia Coal Miner. Great name. I don't know if that's originated. I don't know where that's originated actually, but it's really nice. Again, more of the same thing. Really nice shaped leaves. They are dark and they have green veins, we'll call them. They're very, very dark, like a purpley black almost, and they have green veins. I just love to know how easy or difficult it is to keep them like that, to be honest. Oh, the next one's really quite nice. I think Ben quite likes this one. Yes, literally, Ben likes this one. This is the Colocasia Fontaine, hang on, Fontenessii, I think. This looks really, really good. And it reminds me of like a normal version of a plant, like way down this list, really, really good. It looks like it has a dark leaf margin. And of course it has dark veining and who doesn't want that? That's kind of the inverse to the other ones I have been showing you, minus the teacup. The teacup looks like it has dark veining and so does this one. So if you like the inverse of all of those dark leaves, then this might be the one for you, as I say, they're all in TC. They shouldn't be too difficult to get. And that's it for the common colocasia. So now you should be a little bit familiar with what colocasia generally are. If you're looking for an easy way to build and run your own website, then look no further than Squarespace. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's so quick and easy to edit any one of these templates and make it your own. You can even have multiple websites under one account. For example, here is the website for my shop, but I also have a new one here that I created from a template. This way I can switch between whatever I'm working on really easily and I can create and manage new websites so much more efficiently. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Kaylee Ellen to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it for voiceover, Kaylee. Back to the video. Shall we begin? The real beginning. This is uncommon and we start with Colocasia Essentia Gigantia Thailand Giant or Thai Giant, I think it might be. It says here Thailand Giant Strain. I cannot get my words out today. This doesn't look like much, but I think the entire point of it is that it grows huge. So I'm guessing this is one obviously you would put in in a really warm climate in a garden outside. Because as I mentioned at the start of the video, a lot of these plants like growing literally in water. A lot of these plants will grow out of ponds and stuff like that. They absolutely love it. So by the looks of it, this is one that is bought for its size. A lot like Philodendron, Gigantium, or if you were to buy a large form Monstera or something like that. This is probably why you're buying these. This is probably a garden plant. Now I'm not knocking it if you want to put it in your house. You do what you want to do. But that's how I see it anyway. I think that's probably where it would thrive the most. Next plant in Uncommon, we have the Alocasia Black Coral. Now this looks honestly like a lot of Colocasia in this list. There's a few in this list that are all black. So if you like all black, put a section in your little notepad notes, because I know a lot of people do that for these videos. Put a little section and just put black Colocasia and write this one down, because there is going to be a few. So I'll tell you that straight up. Knowing what is further down in this list, I wouldn't pick this. And it, again, it's got nothing to do with rarity. It's literally to do with how it looks. So I wouldn't personally pick it, but of course I like it. It's a collocation with black leaves. Have I been saying alocasia sometimes? I don't know. If I have been saying alocasia at any point, I'm really sorry. It's force of habit. If I ever say alocasia, I mean collocasia. Moving on, we have the collocasia sangria tropical. I think this is actually really sexy. Oh my God. So this, oh, she, that's really nice. It reminds me of a pink china, that one. It has beautiful green leaves, but the stems, the stems are like rhubarb pink stems. That's a really nice one, that. It's a shame that the party is in the petiole, as I like to say, but that is quite a nice one. And I would probably have that. Again, I would pop it in the garden though, but I don't think 
I could have this in the UK. I think in the UK, do we not, we dig them up in winter, don't we? Our collocation, things like that. And then we, we put the comb to rest anyway for a few months and then we take it back out. So I think you could have these in the UK over summer and then just keep digging them up and putting them back, um, which I might try when I get a house. I think I could maybe try and do that. I don't know. Um, it's nice though. I really, really like that. It's just a shame that you don't see more up front on the leaf. Next up in Uncommon, we have the Collocation Diamond Head. This one's quite nice. Again, it is dark. So if you've got a section for dark Collocation, put it in there. I can't tell you anything special about it because all I can see is literally one, the one picture of it, but it looks quite large, actually. These leaves look quite broad, whereas a lot of other um, Collocation seem to be a bit longer in the leaf. So I quite like that. But of course, there's not much to say because it's just all dark leaves, right? But it is really, really nice. And of course, if it's more affordable than a, a darker collocation that is more rare, then absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely put it on your list. Plus, if you're just generally looking for a dark collocation, you don't really mind what it is, then you've got some options now. Oh, I like the name of this. This is a little bit boring for me personally, but I like the name of it. So this is the Collocasia Hawaiian Punch. I like the other one more, though. What was it called? The Sangria Tropical. I think that's much better because I feel like the petioles are more pinky. Um, I, don't, I know I don't like pink, but what I mean is they're more vibrant, right, than this one. So personally, I'd go for the other one and not this one, but it is quite nice. I mean, it's got to be the other one, isn't it, really? Moving swiftly on, we're, we're straight into rare. We're straight into rare. There wasn't too many uncommons because honestly, common and uncommon, it's a it's kind of a weird mashup. And I will speak a little bit more on that later because as we go through the ranks in rarity, what we find is a lot of them, you literally can't tell how rare they are. You can only see how often they're sold. And I know that might seem a bit obvious, but it's really the case with Colocasia because they're only really just up and coming and then there's loads of random hybrids that one guy made and, and all that kind of thing. But anyway, we will tackle that when we get to it. We are moving on to rare because if you can't already tell, a lot of them are in the later categories. First up in rare. Oh, actually, I've written these back to front. I'm going to skip ahead then. I'm actually going to skip back one. So we're actually going to start off rare with not the plant I was going to. We're going to start it off with the Colocasia Mojito. And I had one of these ones. And I can't remember if it died or I gave it away. But it was before I moved house way back when. And I had to like seriously downsize all my stuff because I didn't have as much windows and blah, blah, blah. And I got rid of it. And I'm really sad. But I would like to get these. Now, they have been tea. Seed. I absolutely know they've been TC because mine was a tissue cultured one, um, but I don't think they're that available just because everyone wants them. So it's a high demand situation. And because Colocasia haven't fully had their day yet, there is a demand, but the supply is, is trying to rise to meet it, right? We haven't met that equilibrium yet. So a few things on here, that's going to be the case. But this one's really nice, is it not? It is lime green. And I think the accents are dark. So the, the extras on the plant are dark. So the base is lime green. Does that make any sense? So it's really, really pretty and I really, really like it. Conversely though, and this is why I want to show you it this way around, the opposite of that, if you had to invert that, you would get this one. And this is the Colocasia Midnight. This is quite nice. I don't think it's as nice as the Mojito, personally, for me. But that is very, very sexy. It's really nice. I just feel like the mojito is a lot brighter, isn't it, really? It's just got more pizzazz. But if you want something a little bit more muted and you don't really like the whole lime green vibe, then I would probably go for the midnight. So it's still the same plant, but depending on what you want, it's almost like light form and dark form, right? So I am trying to stop myself from saying alocasia all the time. It's really getting on my nerves. Okay, so next up is the colocasia black ripple. Now this is, I had to put this in because I know it's dark and it can go in your little section on your notepad if you're having a notepad and if you're writing it down, but it's not black. This one is a little bit different. It's like plum purpley black. It's a little bit like philodendron dark lord type tone. It's kind of different. So I thought if someone wanted like a dark cluster or something either in the garden or their house or whatever, this might be quite interesting. And I don't think it's the obvious choice for a lot of people because obviously they would just pick something with dark leaves um, that wasn't purpley ready. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um, but I do quite like it. I like the texture on the leaf as well. It's really kind of, I don't know how you'd even describe that, but it's quite a sexy looking plant. And I think if I saw that in somebody's garden or even in their house, I would be looking going, mm. One thing I've, I should have really picked up on and I haven't really told you about is I'll, I'll use this picture to show you because it's quite obvious. These things pop really quickly, right? Now I know that alocasia pop quickly, 
But literally, guys, it is nothing compared to colocasia. Colocasia will pop very, very, very fast. And to be honest, when you look at this plant, for example, there'll be loads of others in this list that look like this, but you can really see how quickly they pop. If you look at the base of that plant, there are tons of pops. And I think this is a huge reason why colocasia are getting more popular. They're very easy to propagate most of the time. They will grow from stolons from the plant under the soil and they will produce a corm and then they will grow from that. So you just have to cut the stolons. Um, loads of plants grow that way. Very, very easy. So I, I kind of like that. It's different. Again, it's not my favorite. I've got some of the dark ones that are my favorite. So literally, if you want some dark ones, you do need to write a list because uh, there's another one I'm about to add to it. But it is nice and I, I like it because it is slightly different from just black. It's a bit of a different tune. You feel me? I like the name of this one. The next one on my list for rare is the Colocasia Black Sapphire. And this one is nice. This is obviously more black. It looks like it's got a similar texture to the previous one, but not quite the same. The one above that, the, I've forgotten the name already, the Black Ripple, it's different. I think that's why it's called Black Ripple, right? Um, this one just seems to be indented, but not, not in the same way, I guess. It's not a, a ripple literally like the other one. It's just more of a wave kind of formation. Nice, again, but rather have a different one on this list. Right, we're going to start getting a little bit more interesting now. So if you want something that's a bit more party up front and it's not black, then this might be the start of where your interest starts to peak. Next on my list for rare, we have the Colocasia White Lava. This is quite a new plant on the market. And I will tell you, I think that this is being used for most of the hybrids that we're going to see both in this video and generally a lot of the hybrids that you will see if you start looking for Colocasia on things like Facebook or whatever. I think this is the base of a lot of hybrids. And honestly, you can kind of see why. That's kind of cool. And I would certainly quite like that. Now, again, I will say this now to save you some time. If you are making lists in this video for something you might be interested in, you you need to make a list for, I don't know what you would call that, but some kind of patterned thing like this. Call it whatever you're going to call it, but I think you need to make a category for it because there is a lot like this in different colors. So if you like this kind of thing, then you might want to make a list of it. I kind of need to refresh myself on what other plants in this list I have that look like that because I might pick another one over that. But I quite like how tidy this one is. That's why I will say the patterning is very tidy. So I do quite like that. So I'm, I'm going to keep my eye on that one actually. Next one in rare, we have the Colocasia Maui Sunrise. I keep stopping myself from saying Alocasia every damn time. So this is nice, but what you will, well, you will notice straight away is from what I said about the last one, it's not as tidy. And that's the best way I can describe it to you. It's just not as tidy as the other one. I prefer the other one straight away, the white lava to this one. I'm sure someone loves it, but it ain't me. It ain't me. I don't like that one very much. So we'll skip over that one reasonably quickly. This one's nice. This one's quite different. Imagine if you liked the last two, but it's too contrasty for you. And you wish you could just put like a, a, a blur over it, right? Because that's what this next one is. So you might like it. You might like it. The next colocasia is quite pretty and I just think it's it's just easy on the eye. So the next colocasia in my list for rare, I'm trying to train myself to say it, is the colocasia tropical storm. And honestly, this this is kind of a favorite of mine in this list. I really like it. As I mentioned before, it does have some contrast, but it's it's literally like someone took a blur over it and put like some sort of Instagram filter over it and just calmed it all down, took the contrast down. And I really like that. I'm pretty sure by the looks of that, that that's velvety as well. Um, oh, it's really pretty, isn't it? I quite like that one. I'd like to see more photographs of that one. I might look that up after this video because I really like that one. I might try and get that one. It's quite nice. Let me know what you think of that. Let me know if you like so far the contrasted like stark ones or you prefer the more muted. I suspect people are going to prefer the more muted ones, but I'm wondering how that changes once we add some different colors in the mix, put it that way. So we'll start right now, shall we? The next plant on my list for rare is the Colocasia Waikiki. Waikiki? This is kind of, I, I like this, right? And I know I've just said, <laughs> I know I've just said that I don't like all of the contrasty shit, right? But this is actually really, really nice. And it's not, I don't know how to say it. It's more user friendly than a lot of the other plants that look similar to this on this list is. Does that make sense? I like that a lot as well. I would have both that one and the last one. That's nice, you know. 
I might end up getting into Colocasia. I'm looking at some of these and I'm like, you know what, yes. Especially if they grow fast as well. Let me know what you think of that one because that obviously has some creamy, I don't think it's quite yellow. It's creamy and it has like a rhubarb -y, but it's kind of like a dusty rhubarb color running through it. So it's not like too much on the eye. It's just quite colorful. And I think that could look really quite cool. I, I think I need to get some Colocasia. I think I need to get some Colocasia. That's really nice. So that is the Colocasia Waikiki. It's probably not how you say it, but anyway. My hair is, uh, it's it's due, it's due, it's due. It's due a cut and it's not looking its best. I've tried my best to smooth it down today. I think I need to do some Olaplex or something. It's not looking its best. So anyway, moving up a category, we have very rare. And again, availability is very low for a lot of the plants in this list. But as I mentioned before, the only thing I've been able to base this on is how many times I'm seeing them sold. So I'm gonna be very transparent with you and say that that's what I'm basing it on. So it's not, it's not a very strong underpinning of a category. So these may move around a lot. So definitely do your research, basically. Oh, I love the name of this one. I love the name of this one, but I don't like it as much as the previous one, but it's very comparable to the previous one, which was the Waikiki, whatever it's called, Waikiki, I don't know. We're gonna start off very rare with the Colocasia Octolarva, and I'm pretty sure that those leaves stay like that. I think they stay half fold which is really weird, I know. And it's not the only plant that does this as well. So if you like some weird shit like that and you like things that just, I guess, don't look quite like a normal leaf, then make a category for that too. Because I'm telling you now, there's more in here like that. There's a very cool one later on that you would just love. If you like the idea of this, you're gonna absolutely love some of the ones later on. Honestly, you're gonna just die. I like this, but honestly, looking, if I scroll up to the last one, the last one's way prettier. It's like a way more refined version. So it's not for me, but it's very cool. And I, again, I don't actually know if this is a hybrid or what, it probably is. A lot of these again are probably hybrids because they've been mushed together. So as you can see before, white lava, I, I'm not gonna say it's definitely the base for a lot of them, but I think it might be. Plus I, I think I've got hybrids further down the list that utilize some of the rare ones together, if you know what I mean. It's an amalgamation, put it that way. Oh, this one. I don't know what people are gonna think about this. Now, personally, I like it, but I can see why a lot of people might not like this one. So brace yourselves. This is one for the dark foliage. And this is the Colocasia isopoda. So it's obviously similar to an isopod, right? I don't think it looks too like, oh, on the eye. I think it looks okay, to be honest. It's the, it's the edge of that leaf, isn't it? That's obviously why it gets the name. It does remind me a little bit of like a woodlouse, even though I don't think a woodlouse even looks like this, but that's the first bug it reminds me of. It's it's different. Again, I have another dark one further down the list that I would pick, so I'm, I wouldn't pick this, but I can definitely appreciate it for its uniqueness, that's for sure. It should be a Halloween goth plant, this one. That might have to go into the list this year. I kind of like the next one though, and I, I shouldn't. I actually shouldn't, it's weird, it's weird, but I think a lot of people might actually like this. I actually, you know what, I don't know, I'm saying that, I don't know. So the next plant on my list for very rare for Colocasia is the Colocasia jellyfish. Now I'm pretty sure black jellyfish is also available, but I actually prefer the green one of all things. I know, I know, I get like this sometimes. But you can probably tell why it's jellyfish, it kind of just hangs like that. The leaves completely fold over and flop on each other. And I've seen pictures of it that are Honestly, better than that, actually. It's not the best picture, um, but it's really quite nice, isn't it? Again, I don't know why I like that. I probably shouldn't like that. It's a bit weird, but I do. I think that's kind of cool. Let me know what you think about that, because honestly, I don't know what people are gonna think about all these leaves that are like half folded or folded the wrong way and stuff like that. It's not something I feel that we're used to with things like Monstera, Philodendron, Anthurium, Alocasia, like it's not something we're used to. So this is a little bit new for us in terms of liking that kind of thing. But let me know what you think, because I'm kind of curious. I'm okay with it. I think it depends. It depends on the leaf, but this one's kind of cool. And I would like to see a full plant of it. I might be showing you a full plant of it, by the way, but the image I'm looking at now is not, it's one leaf, so I'm not really sure. Right, it's gonna start getting a little bit interesting again, and we're gonna add some pink in, and we're gonna add some pink in on some dark foliage, and if you like that kind of thing, then you can make a category for that on your notepad as well. So we're gonna start off with the Colocasia Black Lava. Very nice, I know, I know. I like this. It's subtle, and I'll tell you straight up, there's more coming that are way less subtle than this, and you get more and more pink. So if you like a little bit of pink, this might be one for you. Personally, I really like the leaf shape. I think that leaf shape is nicer than a lot of others. I can't tell if that's shiny or a bit 
velvety? It looks like the young ones are velvety, but I'm not sure, so I don't want to say either way. I'm not sure. I might need to see more pictures of that. The picture I'm looking at, honestly, it could go either way as to whether it's velvety or not. And I like the last one I can see is velvety. Uh, yeah, some of these look like they could go either way. I'm not sure. I suspect it's in the middle, so not velvety and not glossy. It's definitely not glossy, but I kind of need to make a decision as we go along as to whether I prefer this one over some of the other darky pinky ones, because I haven't really refreshed my memory on this. So I will have a look as we go down and then I will tell you what I prefer. But it is very nice and it's a little bit more understated if you don't want, well, I don't know how to put it. If you don't want super pink, anyway. Moving on, this one's, this one's weird. What is this one called? Okay, yeah, that makes sense. This next one is the Colocasia Light Pillar. And again, we've got some yellow and we've got a little bit of pink. This will be a theme. So I like it, but I think there's nicer ones than that. It's hard, isn't it? You almost want to put everything together that's like yellow and pink, you know? But I think the other one that was in the rare category the the way well, I can't say it why kiki way kiki still winning it for me actually still winning it for me so I don't like it over this one but if you like that kind of thing then definitely put it on a list I think this is one of few rare plant indexes where you can actually categorize the plants I you can have a dark section you can have like a yellow and pink section you can have a pink section you can have a variegated section like this is quite a different rare plant index I think to well not a lot of the other ones but the way that they're kind of going as we go along speaking of which this is definitely one for your light and dark contrasty patchy sort of colocasia and this one's very nice this one is very nice this is the colocasia nebula and i don't really know if i'm honest looking at this the difference between that and the oh i'm gonna have to scroll up i can't remember what it was called one moment please midnight so i don't really know what the difference is between the midnight and the nebula but i like them both so again i would have to look a little bit more closely to find the difference to me they look the same but it might be that the stems are a different color or leaf shape is different. I mean, that looks velvety for sure. So the other one might not be, I'm not entirely sure, but that is very, very nice. I've got to say, I like that, but I do kind of like that kind of thing anyway. I think it's really, really pretty. It's almost like variegation, but not, but cheaper, but you don't have to worry about it. it this is kind of cool. Anyway, the next one, the next one, it's worth a giggle to be honest. The next one on my list for very rare is the Colocasia G-string. Yes, really. So, as you might be able to tell, it looks a little bit like a G-string. I don't mind it. It's, it's very round, isn't it? It kind of works with the whole G-string. But I don't, I don't love it. Honestly, I, yeah, funny name and everything else, but I, I don't love it. I think there are other ones that are a little bit nicer. Again, namely that other one that I just can't pronounce further up, um, that, that is probably more affordable as well because it's in a lower category, right? It's cool and I like the name, but it's not massively grabbing me. It does look very, very, very round though compared to a lot of others. So that's kind of nice. Ah, I have some of these next ones in the shop as it happens because they're cool as hell and I'm growing them from little plants and I'm growing them big. The next plant I have to talk to you about is, it's awesome guys. Now you will either love this or you will hate this. There is no in between. This is a Marmite plant, I'm sure of it. The next and last actually plant on my list for very rare is the Colocasia Pharaoh's Mask. This is different. This is different. I get it. A lot of people will recoil. I didn't know what I thought about it when I first saw it, actually. I guess I've just looked at it a lot. And the more I see photos, the more I'm kind of okay with it now. But I didn't know what to think of it um, originally. I don't know what it's a hybrid with, but it's very nice. I think this is by Brian's Botanicals, this one. And I think there are a couple in here that are. I might forget to tell you that. I've got the links as to where I've got them from. I can see this is from Brian's Botanicals, but I, I might have forgotten to tell you about that earlier on. It's nice and it, it's basically a normal green colour and essentially it's got really strong veining and that veining pulls back over and it creates, well, literally like a mask. It's really, really different. And of course the stems are really dark. I understand why a lot of people would look at that and go, what the hell? But I kind of like it, guys. And yeah, I've got I've got a few small ones that I'm growing out in my studio and I do have some to sell as well. So if you're interested, get in touch. Um, I didn't put them out on the last launch. Actually, I should probably have done that. 
Um, but they will definitely be out on the next one. But if you'd like to buy one, maybe get in touch and I see what I can do. If you're in the US, we're going to have to line that up with inspecting and stuff like that. But very, very, very nice plant. Very nice plant. I like these. Can confirm I have them. Very tenacious plant. I can tell you that straight up. I imported them in. They were fine. They lost leaves or whatever. So I trimmed them off and just left like a stump. All the roots had completely rotted. It did that thing that a lot of plants do when I get in where you get them in. Roots look fine. You put them in lecker. You take care of them through the acclimation process all the roots just rot all of them every single one and then they start growing new ones but i can literally tell you this one is very tenacious not all colocasia are some of them are a bitch this one is not it's of course one of few colocasia that i can actually speak on but very very nice and again you will either like them or you won't I totally appreciate that. I totally appreciate that. Let me know if you do like them or you don't, because I'm kind of genuinely interested to see if people can handle that kind of thing. Because I would actually put that in a Halloween plant list as well, actually. I'm going to have to do another Halloween plant list this year, and Colocasia is going to have to be in there. But yeah, a bit different, that one, isn't it? Our last category, because there is no holy, because I don't know enough, and that would be weird, and there's too many out there, and believe me, we haven't even covered the surface of Colocasia, but we're now in Extremely Rare. And I have quite a few notes on Extremely Rare, and I'm just going to kind of pluck them out as I'm talking to you, because I wrote a lot. But essentially, a lot of these are new hybrids, right? What is going on with this? Excuse me. I think it's my scoliosis, like, pulling it, legitimately. Like, how? Like... <sighs> Literally, my shoulders are all wonky because it's it's not good. It's scoliosis. I'm not like sat like that. It just, my shoulder does that. It's really bad. And it, as a result, my underwear goes all funky. Anyway, so a lot of the plants in here are hybrids and they are extremely rare because they've just been made and people are holding onto them for the money. You feel me? You feel me. Nothing wrong with that. It's just how it fucking is. It's just how it fucking is. It's not ideal. It's how it is. So I'm not knocking anyone there. But... Prices on this list vary between, I have here, $500 and $50,000 doll hairs. Hairs of a doll. $50,000. Yes, really. USD. Doll hairs. $50,000. Um, it depends on the source and who's hybridizing and all sorts of shit, but it's it's a thing. It's crazy when you consider that the mainstream hasn't got into Colocasia yet, but clearly I think people are trying to get the jump on us is what I think is happening. I think they're predicting this and they're going a bit, a bit crazy. I think a lot of these expensive ones though are being bought and sold as essentially investment plants. So I think that's what you will be seeing if you start looking this up on Facebook and getting into it. That's what you will find. A lot of people are investing in them because they are easy to propagate and grow because they literally propagate themselves, as I explained before, with the stolons and the corms and stuff. Stolons are runners, by the way, if you commonly know them as runners. Same thing. So yeah, that, that's why they are getting passed around. But I think people are really hybridizing things. And I think they're sat there going, listen, I know what I have. You will pay kind of thing. I think that's what's going on. So the market is moving very quickly. I have here. I think what is happening, and this is this is this is transparent Kaylee coming out. On some of these photographs and stuff I found in general, I must say this about these plants, guys, it's really important because they cost a lot of money. And it's important whether they cost a lot of money or not. But specifically because it costs a lot of money. A lot of these hybrids that are coming out, I do not personally think they are as stable as we are being uh led to believe. What I think is happening, and a lot of times you can see this, if you're going to buy one online, you may see a leaf of a hybrid that looks amazing, but if you look at the older leaves, it looks nothing like that, and it's just kind of one leaf that's throwing really well. Because they're new hybrids, they are very, very variable, and I think they're very unstable, so I have to tell you that. You need to look at more than one leaf. I think you need to look at the plant as a whole. If you look at the plant as a whole, I think due to the way they propagate themselves, I think you'd be okay. But I have to put that out there. If you see a plant that you're looking for online and it looks seemingly good on one leaf but not on the others, please, I implore you to question that and to just sit back and think, okay, is this a stable hybrid or is it very, very new? Because you might just get the one leaf that's good and then the rest of the leaves might go back to looking like what it did. Now, that doesn't count for the things like all the TC stuff I mentioned in the beginning. They've been TC. They look like that. You're all good. You're all good. But with some of these... I have to put that out there. So with that said, let's start Extremely Rare. So the first plant on my list for Extremely Rare is the Colocasia SBA Series R13. So I think it's known as an R13. Apparently, I've got written here, it's $6,000 for an adult plant. $6,000. Um, I have one of these being shipped over. Um, it's... 
Yeah, I hope it does well. <laughs> I hope it does well. Yeah, again, be careful. Be careful. These are new hybrids and they're very unstable. So what looks good, it might not persist. It is a gamble. I must tell you that it is a gamble. But taking that all outside for just one moment, and we'll talk about the plant. I quite like this one. It's not typically what I like in these color cages, right? I don't tend to like the ones where there's like loads of coloring on the inside. I do prefer more of a veiny vibe because I'm just going back to my like anthurium kind of roots there. But that one is quite nice, I've got to say. It's nicer than some of the others on this list for me personally, but honestly, again, put it in a list because there are a lot of others that you might like more. And the ones I'm going to show you on this list, by the way, that are pink and black, for example, Oh, there's so many more than what I've mentioned. So again, definitely do your research, but I really like this. And I hope it stays that way because that's really cool. It reminds me of something and I don't know what it reminds me of, that pattern at the top. I don't know, it's like a, I don't know, like the tail of something? I don't know, what does it remind you of? It reminds me of something anyway. Right, this is an example of what I was talking about with, you know, there are a lot of things kind of the same and it's kind of up to you. This next plant on my list is the Colocasia Nirmala, Nirmala, Nirmala. I don't want to go in American for that. I can't do an American accent, but this plant is $10,000 for a large plant. Yes, I know, it's gross, it's gross. It's it's. Pretty plant, but the price is gross. Um, I like it. Do I like it more than the first one? You know, I don't actually. But what you can see is that patterning from the previous one, the R13, it's now longer and it stretches through the vein more. So that's the difference between the R13 and that one, I would say. The leaves look more or less the same. I wouldn't say there was like a ridiculous difference from that. I think generally speaking from these prices and these colors, the pink and the dark and all of that, it's it's in and it's a lot of money. Um, I, I can't see these prices holding forever, by the way, due to how quickly these things do um, propagate. That could also be a genuine reason why people are starting these prices off very high. That could genuinely be a reason. And I'm not knocking that at all. I think that's smart. If these things are gonna lose value very, very quickly and people are gonna make a lot of money investing on them, then that, then that investment opportunity should have a price. Makes sense. Because people would really get their money back on these 100% if they're growing that fast. So that could be why they're expensive. Um, also, it's pink, guys. And you know how the plant community feels about pink. It's mixed feelings, don't get me wrong, but many of us like pink. But yeah, really, really nice. I do prefer the previous one, just going off these photos personally. Obviously, I bought one, so I would prefer it. But it's still just as nice, though, if you prefer that one. Right, this is weird. This is weird, and I do think this is actually, this is fully unfurled. I think it just looks like this, it's really weird. So this is the Colocasia Queen of Phoenix, and I'm pretty sure it sells for 10,000 for an adult plant. Yes, really 10,000, ew, ew, ew. But it's quite pretty. Again, not quite my thing. I can appreciate the niceness in it, but it's not quite my thing. But if you want a plant that's kind of got a bit of curl going on, then this is absolutely one for you. And the creamy yellow aspect of the plant stretches quite far compared to a lot of the other plants that we've seen in this list. So again, if you want to put it in that category in your little notepad or whatever, put it in there. But it's definitely one of the investment ones. So if you want to um, spend a lot of money, I guess, then then maybe do that. Actually, off the back of this, if you guys would like a video on investment plants for this year or something like that, I can try and do that. Um, I'd like to start with maybe investment collocation or something like that, but we can do some investment stuff if you want. So if you're watching that thinking, God, I'd really love one of those videos again, let me know um, and I will, I will certainly make one. Certainly make one. Yeah, I like it, but it's not quite for me. I don't really actually like how it's not fully unfurled. I don't know, this is not for me, that one. But it is quite nice. So next on the list, for extremely rare, we have the Colocasia Moonshine. I don't know how I feel. I don't like this picture personally, but I bet that there might be nicer ones. I don't know. For me, I'll tell you what I don't like about this. It's the petiole to leaf ratio. I'm a little bit of a stickler for stuff like that. I shouldn't be, but I, I kind of am. It feels like the leaf is very small for the petiole. I feel like we could get a better ratio there. So I don't know what that's being crossed with, or if the plant grows a little bit better than that and it's just that plant kind of thing. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna skip over that one pretty quickly because there's not a lot to say and I think you could maybe do better. I don't have a price for this one, actually. It's not written on there, but I don't love that one. I don't love that one. Right. Black and pink, again. We have now, this is this is a thing at the minute. It's definitely a thing at the minute. This is by Brian's Botanicals, and this is the Colocasia Redemption. Redemption. 
I'm saying reduction. So this costs eleven thousand dollars for this plant, and I like it. I. I, no, I do. I do like it. I don't know why I'm thinking so hard. I do like it. I think I prefer the other one, though. Um, it's nice. I can't tell the difference between that and there's another one on this list as well that I can't tell the difference from. Honestly, there's not too much to say on it because it comes down to preference and it's what you prefer out of a dark colocasia with pink on it. As I've said a million times, there are a lot on this list, so it is genuinely down to you as to which you want to go for. And it's my job to put the options out there and give you the choice and tell you what I know. So it's nice. It is 11,000, but yeah, Brian Botanicals has made it. Uh, he's made it himself. Apparently there's been some auctions going on this plant and I think it's done about $12,000. So th th this is a thing, it is selling at that as well. It's not just listed for that, guys. These things are selling at that. So quite a bit that one, quite a bit of money. Right, next one. Now, Ben loves this. I, I kind of don't like this. This is, this is a little bit beyond my means, this one. So the next plant in Extremely Rare is the Colocasia Hellboy or RK Hellboy. Is it RK Hellboy? I'm not sure. Yeah, RK Hellboy, perhaps, I think. I <laughs> I don't like it very much on the basis that it genuinely looks like it's had a problem in the sun and it looks like it's on its way out. That's why I don't like it. It's cool that it curls up. It's got a really weird dusty vibe to it, but it. I'm not feeling that one. I, is it okay? I don't know, I like it. One of those leaves looks a bit like it's burned. I could be wrong though, so honestly do not take what I'm saying. Literally go and look it up, but I, I'm not a fan of that one. I'm not a fan of that one. I think if you want something different, I think there's there's other ones to go for. And I can't personally see many people going for this one over a lot of the other ones, even like the Redemption or the R13 or something like that, I think. I think that's a little bit much for me. But if you're thinking, yes, Kaylee, I like the dark, I like the pink, but I don't want this kind of bit in the middle, right? <laughs> I just want pink veins. <laughs> you can you can go for the Colocasia witchery, I believe this is called, and I think it's 6,000 for a mature plant, but it's sexy, guys, and as I say, if you don't want the, the middle bit, then this one is quite nice to go for. The leaves look very, very round as well. It doesn't look like super, super, super pink um, down the veins, but it is pink and it, it's a little bit more, it's almost a little bit more pharaoh's masky, right? Except it's dark and it's pink and it doesn't wrap around itself, but it is quite nice. So if you're looking at all this pink stuff going, I, I, I don't dig that in the middle, then this might be very nice. I think it might be a nice alternative to the the stuff with the pink flush in the middle. So that's quite interesting to me personally. I quite like that one. Very, very nice. Do you remember at the beginning of this Red Plant Index when dark foliage was coming up and I kept telling you, no, there's one I would rather have on this list. Well, this is it. And it's very unbranded for right now. This is the Colocasia Batman. Of course it is. This is sexy. This is sexy. For me, this is the sexiest black colocasia in this list by far. It looks black black as well. It's not even got purpley in it. It's like black black. And on this particular picture that I'm looking at, you can actually see some colocasia in the background that are also very nice, by the way. But they're a different... They are a different breed. But they're a different breed in the sense that they look velvety and they have like a slight light wash down the middle and stuff. This is just sexy. It curls back over on itself a little bit, so it becomes a bit more of like a relaxed kind of pad, but it's just hot. And honestly, for a dark colocasia, that's the one I'd go for. And it annoys me every time because I have like, I just end up liking the rare shit and it's honestly got nothing to do with price or anything. It's genuinely how it looks. And that to me looks like the nicest dark one on this list. I would love to know if you agree or disagree. Um, for the money, no, it probably isn't the nicest dark one on this list. You feel me? Like if I was actually gonna go out and get this, yes, it'd be nice to have it. But if I if I was just putting it in my garden and it wasn't, a, you know, it wasn't like an investment plant or something like that, then no, I, I probably wouldn't get it. I'd go for something more affordable because I just think that's crazy. I don't know what price it is on here. It's not, I haven't written it on, but it's in this category. So you can bet that it's got a high price. It does depend. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's one of the $500 ones. I can't remember. I will look that up for sure because I... That's quite hot. Right, I think it's finally time that you guys get something variegated or thereabouts, right? I think you've waited long enough and we didn't think it was necessarily coming with Colocasia, but it's coming now. So you're gonna like this one if you like Philodendron Eelmanii a lot. So the next plant on my list for Colocasia for Extremely Red is the Colocasia Aquala... No, Aquatilis... I can't say it. Aquatilis Var Pink Andaman. I... 
do us. <laughs> do we want with that name? So literally, Ilmanii, right? It's Ilmanii in a Colocasia. I don't really need to say much more than that. That is literally what it looks like. It looks the same. It's got a similar leaf shape. It's the variegation display is very, very similar. Sorry, my hair is pulling on my top. It's very, very uncomfortable. I don't know if I'd go out of my way to get it. Now, I know it'd be a good seller, if you want my opinion on market trends, this would sell very well for obvious reasons. I don't need to explain really why those reasons are, but it would sell very, very well. So I think if someone was to buy this and invest in it, they can't really go far wrong. Providing it grows well, it might be an absolute nightmare. I don't know. But it is very, very pretty. It's not something I've necessarily got my eye on, but it is very, very pretty. And congrats to anyone that has this because it's very, very nice. But honestly, the next one on my list is probably one of my favorites on this entire list. And I want to know if you agree. So, next up on the list for extremely rare, I have the Colocasia Starlight. I don't know how much this is. I haven't got it written down. We best believe it's probably going to be a lot. This is one of my favorites because for me, it's got it all. It's got a little bit of contrast, but it doesn't have too much, right? It's not too untidy. There's a little bit of wash down the middle, but we're okay. We're not, we're not going insane. It's okay. It's, it's PG, you feel me? But it also has a little bit of, was it Nebula and Moonlight? was it called? Basically the green and the dark combo. And it's got it all in one. And I think that's awesome. But not only that, guys, the petioles on it look like a deep, um, the crimson, not really, like a deep burgundy. That's the word I'm looking for. That's the color I'm looking for, burgundy. It's deep burgundy on the back. That kind of makes it an all-rounder for me. It's almost like the way I talk about, for example, philodendron, El Choco Red, I talk about that plant being an all-rounder because it's kind of got everything you want. It's just got loads of stuff going on. This is the equivalent for me. This is a collocation that has loads of stuff going on. I think it's awesome. It's got a little bit of dark, it's got a little bit of contrast, it's got a little bit of variegation, and it's got a colored stem. Please tell me what anybody else wants from a collocation because for me, that's the one. That may be my favorite one on this list, actually. If I had to pick one that I could go away with from this list, I think it's that one. Let me know again what your favorite one is on this list, if any caught your eye. But for me, that is the one. And I would absolutely die to own one of these. These are beautiful. You know, I'm not wearing one of these tops again. What is the point? I know they look good in theory, guys, but my shoulder is having none of it, is it? I feel like I have to... Which one goes down? That, that shoulder goes down. That one's up. So I have to kind of... No, I have to raise that shoulder up to make it look normal. Oh, honestly, you, you have no idea, honestly. Anyway, next plant. Oh, it's the last plant. No, it's not the last plant. <laughs> it's not the last plant. I'm lying to you. I'm very sorry, I'm lying to you. So the next plant on my list for extremely rare. Again, you will either love it or you will hate it or you will find it hilarious and move on with your life like I do. But this... <laughs> Ah, uh, this is the Colocasia Predator, and I am going to use the image I'm looking at because it has Predator on it and it's sick. So as you can probably tell, it's called Colocasia Predator because of how it looks. I don't know what it's been hybridized with. I don't know how much it costs. It's not on here. But if you want something a little bit weird, then this is absolutely the one for you. I don't personally dig it in terms of owning it just because I don't like the rolled up vibe on the leaves in that way. Pharaoh's mask is a little bit different. It kind of universally rolls all back to create a mask, right? It's a little bit tidier than that. I like my plants quite tidy, I think. And this for me, although it is absolutely brilliant and I am totally acknowledging that, it's more brilliant to talk about and look at photographs of for me than brilliant to own. Is that my shoulder going down again? Yeah, literally. And it's like, pull it up. Yeah, it's nice. It is nice, but it's it's just too out there for me personally. But I have to show you it just because it's weird. And check out the image, man. Whoever made that image really knew what they were up to. And I, I really appreciate it. So it's very good. The next plant we must talk about. And I don't know if people are going to get annoyed with me for saying this, but I'm going to because it's an obvious statement to make. So, oh, really? This this is it? Okay. Why is it that much money? Sorry, I'm just reading my own notes back and I'm like, oh shit. So when I talked about a collocation that cost $50,000, this next one is the one that I'm actually talking about. So the next collocation on my list for Extremely Rare is the Colocasia Psylocke. Now, a lot of people compare this to the hybrid that Brian's Botanicals produced, which was the Redemption. A lot of people are. This is, yeah, it's just very similar, isn't it? Again, it's similar to other things on this list, though. Let's keep it absolutely transparent and let's talk about the fact that there are other things, if you want this vibe, that you can get. Some people will genuinely prefer this. Some people will dick swing. Will they not? So you might catch people owning this for a variety of reasons. It's 50 grand, guys. It's 50 grand. It's 50 grand. It's 50 grand. 
Not knocking anyone that wants to buy it, by the way. That's really not what we do on this channel. I'm not price shaming or anything like that. Literally, no. I'm just saying I think people are going to buy this for a variety of reasons. If you want to invest, get it. If you've got £50,000 to invest, then go for it. Go for it. I know I don't. If you want something more affordable, maybe the Redemption is for you. Or maybe some of the others. There was the R13. There was the Witch... I can't remember which one that was. Again, there's a few. And that's why I said earlier, write them down, group them. You might have to go through this and skip through it and write them down if you're looking for that kind of thing. But there it is. There's the 50 grand plant in the list. That is crazy, crazy, crazy. But I think this originates from, is it, I don't know if it's Indonesia or Thailand. I haven't written it down. It's one of the two anyway. Um, I don't know who made it either. It's not written down. So I don't know what to say on it. It's 50,000 pound plant and it's got dark foliage and it's got a pink bit up the middle. Moving on, in Extremely Rare, we have the Colocasia Purple Haze. Now, we're bringing it back a little bit here to something more muted, so just a little break, a little break from that. Um, this is quite nice, though. It looks so much like a common one, though. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not. So that's Purple Haze there. I'm going to have to scroll all the way back up my list and find what it looks like, because I know we covered something in common. I know we did. What did we cover? Uh, we covered we covered a couple of things, but I think it's very similar to either the Antiquorum Illustrious or the Coal Miner. So again, if you like this, but you want a dupe, I'm guessing anyway from the pictures. No, I don't know how it grows. No, I don't know if it changes or anything else. Um, you could go for one of them. Sorry, I'm trying to go all the way back down my list. I've got a lot of collocation in this list. Yes, we're back. We're back with Purple Haze. So yeah, I, I don't know what to tell you about it. Again, please be aware there is stuff that looks like this. You do not have to go down this rabbit hole if it's a lot of money. I don't have the price written down, but there is stuff similar. We mentioned it in common. I'm sure there are a ton that are similar. Um, if there's something I'm not understanding about this plant, by the way, as to why it's different and expensive or whatever, then let me know. Honestly, let me know down below because there might be something I'm missing because if I only see limited pictures, I'm making all my comments right now based off a picture I'm looking at. So obviously if I miss something, then let me know what it is I've missed. Why, guys? Why? 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 I can't even... Just pull it. Pull. God damn it. Honestly. This is, again, this is more pink and a bit more... You know? This is the <laughs> Colocasia Acid Warlock. And it's got a cool name. Not gonna lie, it's got a cool name. Got here... I've got written here, not quite sure how much the acid spreads. I'm guessing that's why it's called acids, because it's got the in the middle. Um, it seems to be a little bit unsymmetrical sometimes. And this is one thing I was going to, this is literally an example of what I was talking about earlier when I said, don't buy a colocasia based on one of the leaves when the others don't look like it, if it's a new hybrid, right? This is exactly what I'm talking about, this plant. This plant highlights it beautifully. So we've got the leaf on the left with a lot of acid splash, right? The leaves on the right, though, you can clearly see do not have that, and they are, they are sorry, they're displaying different. Can't get my words out, I need a drink. So just be careful. If it stayed like what the leaf on the left is, it looks okay, because it still looks a bit tidy. It's not super all over the place. Um, again, there's probably other ones I would prefer, um, but it, I do like it, but I need, I need more from that plant. I need to see more, because from what I can see, it's not stable based on what I'm looking at. So again, be very careful, guys, and do your own research. Do your research, because these can be quite pricey, you feel me? Right, is this the last one on the list? <gasps> it is, it is. Now, this is actually Ben's favourite when we were looking at Colocasia. This is Ben's favourite. Again, this is one of these plants that has it all, but I I, mm, I think I need to see more photographs of this, because the picture I'm looking at, I'm not sold on it at all, personally. Not knocking it at all, but I'm not sold on it personally. The last plant today in Extremely Rare is the Colocasia Atenra. I can't say it. Atenra. It's got a lovely name, don't get me wrong. The name's really nice. But this plant is... It turns back on itself and it's a little bit like the jellyfish, actually. It would not surprise me if jellyfish is in here because it kind of looks like it from that photograph. Then you have a lot of yellow and it disperses quite a long way. Like There's a lot of yellow on this one. And it looks like there is pink creeping in. But I think that's where I don't like it as much because I'm looking at the pink creeping in and it looks really, I don't want to say unreliable, it's its uneven. It, I don't know how stable the pink is. I don't know if it's like working its way in with maturity and it's going to change or different offsprings, you know, different hybrids, I should say, you know, different versions of the same hybrid would look better than this. So I don't know if it needs to do a few more cycles or what. So I'm going to reserve my opinion on it and I'm going to look for more pictures on it. But at the moment, I'm not necessarily feeling that one, I think. I don't know, this picture I'm looking at reminds me of like a duvet cover that's on someone's bed and it's like all, all over the place. I don't know why I think that. But 
That is it for my collocasia red plant index. I am sorry for the amount of times I probably said alocasia. I've tried to correct myself throughout. I think I got it in the end there. Huge, huge list, guys. Believe me when I say that this is the tip of the iceberg. There are so, 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 so many collocasia. You would not believe me. Obviously, I put some of the spicy ones in. I put some of the more interesting ones in because at the end of the day, I know that no one really wants to go for a plain green one when we can have something else, right? Really, really good plants. Now, some of them grow like wildfire and that is great. Some of them do not. Some of them are absolutely all over the shop and they just they just die all the time. They're not all as tenacious as each other. They're not built equally. Keep that in mind. I can only really speak for like one plant in there, to be honest, and that is the Pharaoh's Mask. And I can tell you they are very tenacious. Very, very, very tenacious. I haven't lost a single one and I've brought in a few, so they're really, really good. Hopefully you've got a nice big list and hopefully you've probably got categories within your list. Not even rarity, obviously just the colors because as I I've mentioned for 800 times. A lot of them are very similar. And a lot of the time you can get something that looks reminiscent of, but has a lower price. So do feel free to consider that if, well, I'm sure budget is a thing because it is for everybody, but obviously everyone has different budgets. And with that said, I'm going to keep saying it because everyone loves it when I say it, but please do not just buy plants because they are rare. Do not feel that you have to sell your soul or your belongings to get something, to get that Instagram photo, to grow you following and, and do all of those things. Just don't. It's not worth it. It's temporary. What might work this week will not work next week. It's unsustainable. There, I said it. It's unsustainable unsustainable. It's unsustainable. Personally, I don't buy into all that anyway. It doesn't actually matter to me. I don't follow things like that. I buy plants because I like them and I always have done, but I appreciate that the climate on things like Instagram can be a bit different. I don't really follow people that do that, I don't think, but I'm, I'm aware of the pressures that are there on Instagram. And I just want to say buy things because you like them, guys. If you can find a dupe for one of those 50 grand plants for like, I don't know, $30, absolutely go fucking do it. No one cares. Do you know what I mean? So with that said, thank you very much for watching this Rare Plant Index and special thank you to Squarespace that has sponsored this video today. I love sponsors like this and I'm very pleased to have worked with Squarespace because it basically means that I get the support that I need to keep making videos like this for you guys for free because you get to enjoy it for free. So sponsors are a great thing all around. They're great for me and they're great for you because it just keeps everything ticking over. So thank you very much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. And I think with that said, I kind of need to rest my voice a little bit. I feel like I've talked way more than normal. How long have we been going for? Oh my God, quite a long time because this was a very big Replan index. So I'm going to now stop what I'm doing. I'm going to go and edit it. But I really hope you enjoyed this. If you'd like to request any other Replan indexes, please do so in the comments down below. If one person requests it and loads of people like it, obviously I'll see it more. Um, let me know what you'd like me to do because there's a whole bunch of stuff to do. We haven't even started Replan indexes. So let me know what you think about that. Thank you very much for getting this far. I realize it's long, it's a very long winded video. And I guess I'll see you next week. I'm going to pop something on the end of this one because there is a very special video coming out next week. And I'm going to pop out the trailer that I dropped on my channel um, a little while ago for this. Just, 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 just so you can get a little flavor for something a little bit different. So I'm going to love you and leave you. And I'm very excited to see you guys next Friday. Very excited to see you. I've been working on this video since January. I've been working on it a long time. So I hope to see you there. It will be premiered as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. But anyway... Thank you very much for watching this video. Special thanks to my sponsors. Special thanks to you guys for watching. And I will see you next week. Bye, guys.